Well, welcome to our midweek Bible study about uh, normal. Normally we do this on Wednesday evening, uh, but uh, did a little devotional last night and, uh, and pushed the uh, longer Bible study until today. One of the things we were trying to do last night was get ready for Sunday and make sure our Wi-Fi and everything, or the issues we had uh, were worked out. We think they are, you never know, but uh, it looks better. So um, um, we're looking forward to assembling again together in the building this Sunday. Um, we're studying in the book of James, we're still in chapter one. We're going to read here in a little bit, verses 26 and 27 of chapter one. Remember sort of the thrust of this study, we're uh, continuing our pursuit of wisdom. After studying uh, several of the wisdom books of the Old Testament, we decided to come over to the book of James in the New Testament, which is the most wisdom-like book in the New Testament. And we've been working our way through chapter 1. And uh, the study today is entitled Pure. And we're going to look at what James says about purity here in chapter one, uh, there was there was a man who was driving through the country, and he saw a sign in front of a country store. It said, "Rabbit Burgers, twenty five cents." He was intrigued by uh, both the idea and the price, and so he stopped. He went inside and he bought one. And while he was eating, he spoke with the proprietor of the store. And he said to him, I stopped because I saw your sign and your price. Are these really made completely from rabbit meat? And the owner replied in this way. He said, well, they're mostly rabbit. The man said, what do you mean by mostly? And the proprietor said, well, I, I put in a little mule too. And the man said, what do you mean by a little? And the storekeeper said, well, 50-50. And the man said, what do you mean by 50-50? And the storekeeper answered, you know, you, you put in one rabbit and you put in one mule. Well, the story reminds us of the importance of purity, right? And I think purity is a concept that uh, while we understand the importance, uh, we struggle with it in practical terms, uh, even in, in the church. You know, we have our ideas of what purity is when it comes to the church, when it comes to the practice of religion. Um, sometimes you'll hear calls for maintaining a pure church or maintaining a pure doctrine. But what is it? And, and what is pure religion? Um, do we ever advertise pure religion and then when people come to check it out, they realize that we're, we're, uh, we're using more mule than we are rabbit in, in the terms of our story and, and yet still calling it pure? It's an important question. Um, you know, Israel, ancient Israel, had this very problem. They felt that they were the specially chosen people of God, um, that they practiced the true worship of the one true God. Um, they had the temple, and they had the sacrifices, and the festivals, and so on. And they had their list of religious things that they were supposed to do. And they, they checked them off regularly. And they felt that this won them God's approval and God's special blessing and consideration. And they were wrong. Um, before we look at those couple of verses in James 1, I want to notice one Old Testament text that points this out in really, a, I think, a powerful way. It's in Isaiah chapter 1, and I want you to hear 
of what was going on in old Israel and um, how God was dealing with it through his prophet. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 10, God says, Hear the word of the Lord. And he's speaking to Israel, but notice what he calls them. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord. I've had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well-fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required of you this trampling of my courts? Bring no more vain offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and the calling of convocations, I cannot endure iniquity and solemn assembly. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They've become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your deeds from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Seek justice, correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless, plead the widow's cause. That's clear, isn't it, that, that God was not happy with his people? And, and why was that? They were worshiping him um, like he had told them to. You know, they were going to the temple. They were bringing animal sacrifices. They were special days, special festivals. They were praying. And what did that get them? God refers to them as Sodom and Gomorrah, just about as big a, an Old Testament insult as you could give he said he hated what they were doing, and he was sick of what they were doing. He said, I'm not hearing you when you call out to me, when you pray. You think, uh, you know, what if, if God said to his people today, you bunch of immoral apostates, why do you waste your time on Sunday mornings in this church building? I'm not listening. I don't hear your singing. My ears are deaf to your prayers. Your presence before me turns my stomach. Would that get our attention, if that's what God said? Well, I'm sure it would. And, and why would that ever happen? Well, it would happen if, if God's definition of pure religion and our definition of pure religion were ever out of sync uh, if they didn't match up and that's what happened in ancient Israel and I suppose it's what what can happen uh, to God's people and his church today well in James chapter 1 he sounds a warning about this at the end of uh, the first chapter of his letter let's read those couple of verses James 1 verses 26 and 27. It says there, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So I want us to think about this question today, is our religion pure? According to God's definition, is it pure? Because right here in this passage, James says that um, these are God's standards that he is giving. Uh, he says religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this. And so these are his ways his standards, his expectations for us in the practice of our faith. 
What are the components of pure religion according to God the Father? Well, first, if you uh, get, again look at verse 26, uh, one of the components is controlling the tongue. Uh, it's a major theme throughout the book of James. He talks a lot about the tongue, uh, spills a lot of ink, talking about the power of the tongue in, in his letter. And uh, just uh, look at all the space he devotes to it. He says something about it, chapter 1, verse 19, and then here in verse 26. Um, go over to chapter 3, verses 1 through 12 are devoted to it. And then in chapter 4, verses 1 through 12, we're not talking about a long letter, remember. You have all these texts devoted to the tongue, uh, 4, 1 through 12, and then also chapter 5 in verse 9 and verse 12 of chapter 5, uh, he addresses the subject again. So he says a lot about the tongue, but none of them are more important than what he says right here in this passage. He says, uh, if anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, that person's religion is worthless. So, you know, it's possible to think you are practicing true religion, but not actually be doing it. Um, and one of the things that can cause that is not controlling one's tongue. Um, so often the way a person talks reveals their true character. Uh, if their talk is rough and crude and full of vulgarities, and, and not just bad bad words, bad language, that kind of thing, but if their talk is full of lies or gossip or slander, ridicule, those kind of things, it doesn't really matter what they profess, does it? God doesn't recognize their religion if this is the way their tongue operates. He refuses their worship, in fact, and he turns a deaf ear on their prayers, no matter how beautifully they might be worded. Uh, see, it, it matters not only what we say, but how we say it. We are to speak the truth in love, remember. The truth you speak is not worth anything without love. And the religion that one professes is worthless if there is no control of the tongue. James makes that, that clear. The second component of pure religion, according to God the Father, is this, having compassion on those in need. Specifically, uh, he mentions in this passage examples, and I don't think he means these to be the only ones, but uh, the examples he gives are visiting orphans, and widows in their affliction. So true, pure religion moves from comfortable pews or seats in a building to hurting people. Pure religion is a servant religion. It's a religion that visits those in need. And that word visit uh, might um, need some expansion in, in the way we think of it, it's awfully important. And, you know, it means more than just a social call, although that's important. It means more than just a home visit, uh, visiting a hospital, visiting a nursing home, although uh, those things have largely been taken away from us this year, haven't they, in this pandemic. But it, visit uh, is more than just that. The word actually means to care for after. And so it's a ministry of visitation. It's, it's meeting people's needs. And that might happen in a social call, or there might be a lot of ways you could visit someone and, and take care of their needs. But whatever it entails, you can't have true, pure religion without showing compassion to the needy in an active way. Uh, the truth is that the God doesn't care, you know, if we sing without a band on Sunday, if we then fail to feed the hungry, or 
widow or care for children that don't have parents to care for them. You see, it all goes together. Let me ask you, um, propose a hypothetical here to you, and ask you which of these would upset you more. If on some Sunday, uh, the leaders at a church got up and announced, we're not serving the Lord's Supper today. Or, if they got up and said, we've decided to eliminate benevolent work from the church budget. Which would trouble you more? Now, I imagine you'd probably be fired up about both of them. And, and you should be. Both would be wrong, you see. Uh, to fail to remember the death of our Lord on the Lord's day would be wrong. And, and, and to say we're not going to help people, we're not going to serve people in need anymore. Pure religion involves compassion and, and serving those in need. Um, I try to never forget this, this particular verse from Psalms, uh, from the Psalms. It's from Psalm 8, 68, verse 5, and it's one that I think you ought to memorize if you haven't, because it tells us a lot about who our God is. So Psalm 68, verse 5 says, it's sort of a definition of who God is. It says this, Father of the fatherless and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. So who is our God? He is father of the fatherless and protector of widows. Um, and if we're to be godly, that's the way we're going to be as well. Well, there's one more thing in uh, verse 27 of James 1, one more component of pure religion that he gives us. God the Father says it's vital that we keep ourselves unstained from the world. Unstained from the world. The word unstained means to be without blemish, uh, to be spotless. And you remember going, thinking back about the Old Testament worship, uh, the temple worship, when they brought an animal for sacrifice, it was to be unstained. It was to be perfect, um, pure, stainless. And, uh, you know, another way of expressing what James write, writes here is to say that, that we need to live a, an unpolluted life. Um, I heard a statement once that I... I agreed with and it's about preachers but it applies to to all of us really and it said somebody said a preacher who a preacher can get up in a pulpit and preach the loudest most forceful hellfire and brimstone sermon in the world and all of it be scriptural right down the line on every point but if he goes home that night and orders a pornographic movie on his TV system, God doesn't care one whit about what he said in the pulpit as far as he is concerned. Pure religion is much more than what you say. It's what you do. Uh, remember the first study we did in this series Less talk, more walk. We need to live unpolluted lives before God the Father. And, and he makes that possible through the power that he offers us. It's not something that we generate on our own, on our own effort. We can't do it on our own. But with his power in us, with his spirit, we can. And so pure religion involves controlling the tongue, it involves taking care of those in need, and it involves keeping ourselves unstained from the world. And, um, and today is just a call for us to practice that kind of religion as best we can until God the Father returns uh, to take us home. 
pure religion, pure. James 1, 26 and 27. Uh, next time when we study, we'll break into the second chapter of James and, and look at uh, the wise teachings that he has for us there. Hope you have a great day. God bless you. And uh, may you be pure in your service to him today. We'll see you soon.